Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Pashby. And I'm Dr. Kelly Donahue. Welcome to COVID Conversations. This week, we are talking about mindfulness. And we wanted to talk today with a slightly different take on mindfulness. So oftentimes when we think of mindfulness, I mean, I think of like a spa-like atmosphere, maybe some candles, zen, there you go, exactly, all of that. Um, and that certainly can be what happens, and that could be a lovely goal. But mindfulness in real life every day doesn't always look so spa-like. I think that oftentimes when we become more mindful of our thoughts, and our emotions and our behaviors, that whole thought, emotion, behavior chain, we actually start to see some things that we might be uncomfortable with. One yeah. of my clients used the word, um, when I practice mindfulness, I'm, I'm recognizing that I have decades of, of, what did she say? Decades of unexamined patterns of busyness. And um, where Isn't she was- so true. I know, so true. Where she was basically just talking about how she has kept herself busy with errands and to-do lists and mm -hmm. other people's problems to take care of and other things yeah. almost in an effort to not be present with herself yeah. and i mean i can certainly relate to that as a busy working person um sure. working parent but but i think the idea that mindfulness has to always get us to some zen or a peaceful place mm -hmm. is probably setting a lot of people up for not wanting to even experiment with it because like it feels so far away Totally. And I think also if people start being more mindful and then they get these feelings that are coming up, they start seeing these patterns. And by the way, you're, you are not purposely saying, let me go to the grocery store for the fourth time this week so that I can avoid feeling angry at my mother, right? That's not at a conscious level, but that's what's going on. But when those things start to come up, inevitably, I think we pull back and say, okay, either something's wrong, I'm doing this wrong because I'm not in a spa for sure, or... I don't want to go here or I don't have the tools to go here. Right. Yeah. And so, so much of what you and I work with, with our clients is giving tools, right? Teaching mm -hmm. tools so that when, a, for example, when a negative emotion arises, that it doesn't feel scary right. or it doesn't feel uncomfortable, so uncomfortable that it feels like I can't mm -hmm. deal with that. In fact, one of the things that I come across a lot is for people that have a history of anxiety or depression, just feeling a negative emotion can be really scary because totally. it's hard to know, is that just sadness or is that a depression coming on? Mm -hmm. Or is that just uh, you know, a reasonable worry or is that my anxiety disorder sort of you know, flaring up again? So yeah. I think for people that have a mental health history, it's particularly challenging to sort of parse out what is just regular emotion and then yeah. what, is, what is a manifestation yeah. of something else. And I think even for people who don't have a mental health history, if you've had no models of dealing with emotion, and when we say emotion, most of the time we're talking about negative emotion, right? Because usually positive emotions, we all sort of have a model for, or they feel good. So it's easier to experience them, but we don't have a model for how to deal with anger, frustration, sadness. And so we don't, or we have a certain reaction when we feel like we need to actually start dealing with that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so during um, the course of these COVID conversations over time, I'm sure we'll talk more about some tools for actually experiencing emotion. Yeah. Um, but in the effort of being mindful today, uh, we hope that you've taken just these three or four minutes here to just be fully present, to pay full attention to what we've talked about. And if you haven't, then rewind it, watch it again and try to be present. And that'll be your mindfulness exercise for the day. Take care.